Hi there, Spark fans. Rob Reynolds here once again, and welcome to the Spark Fun Inventors Kit version 4.1 walkthrough for Project 4. At this point, you should have gone through the first three videos in which we've set up our system and installed the Arduino IDE as well as any drivers necessary, and gone through the first three projects on light, sound, and motion. And now in the fourth project, we're going to learn how to get your breadboard to tell you things. Now, voice synthesis is a little much for what we're doing here, so we're going to use the LCD, or liquid crystal display. A small display is great for telling you information when you don't want to be tethered to your computer. We've used the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE up to now, but that keeps us locked right here at our desk. If we want to take our project out into the wild, we're going to need a small display, and we'll be using the LCD. In this fourth project, we'll be doing things like displaying strings that we've pre-programmed on the breadboard, reading information from a sensor and feeding us information that way, as well as creating an interactive game. So let's get started with the first circuit. This first circuit will be our Hello World circuit. Usually in computer programming, when you begin a new language, the first thing you do is print Hello World. In our first circuit, we blinked an LED, which is the physical computing equivalent of Hello World. But since we're using a display now, we will print Hello World. For this circuit, you're going to need your liquid crystal display, your potentiometer once again, and 16 jumper wires. Follow along in your book or the online guide and let's get this circuit set up. I'll see you at the other side. Once you've got your circuit set up, you'll probably want to go back and double check because there are a ton of wires in here. And any one wire in the wrong pin could screw things up a little or could screw things up a lot. So just make sure you're all set, everything's connected where it should be, and then we'll go and we will open up our code. As with all the others, we'll go down to example, find your SIK guide code master, and now we're looking at circuit 4A, LCD Hello World. So there are a few things here that we can look at. You'll notice here we've included liquid crystal H, just like we did with servo, we had to include a library. This liquid crystal LCD gives it a name and tells it what pins we're using on the breadboard. LCD begin tells us that we've got 16 characters on two rows and LCD clear clears the entire screen. Our loop is pretty straightforward. We set the cursor at zero, zero. That is our uppermost left position. We print hello world. Now below that, you can see we'll set the cursor at zero, one. That zero across one down and we will start printing milliseconds divided by a thousand, which will give us seconds. So let's plug in our red board, make sure that we've got our proper board and our proper port, and then upload our code and see what happens. Now, once you're uploaded, you may not see anything. That's what the blue potentiometer is for. You can adjust that until you get your display. You should see hello world across the top line and the bottom should be counting the seconds since the program started running. So for this first circuit, that's pretty much it. We've told it what to say. We're counting the seconds going by pretty straightforward. And as you can see, it's simply four lines of code in our loop. But let's dig in a little deeper and try and get it to read sensor data. For this second circuit, we'll be reading temperature data in real time using the TMP36 temperature sensor. Now, if you'll notice, the temperature sensor has three legs. One is a five volt leg, one is a ground leg, and the center leg reads differences in the voltage proportional to the temperature changes that it reads. So we'll be using that along with three jumper wires and just adding those to the circuit we have currently. So let's set that up. Once we have our circuit set up, we can open the code and take a look at that to see what it's doing. You'll find your file in the usual place under examples, SIK guide code master, and we'll open 4B temperature sensor. Let's look and see what we have here. We've included the library for liquid crystal and set the pin numbers as well as named it LCD. And here we've got floating point integers for voltage degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. Under setup, LCD begin tells us the size and LCD clear clears it. Now here under loop, 
we've got voltage equals analog read A0, which is your pin from your temperature sensor. And we're taking that and multiplying it by 0 0.004882, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The way we came up with that is we're dividing five volts by the number of samples the analog pin can read, in this case, 1,024. So we get five divided by 1,024, or 0 0.00488, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So here under degrees Celsius, we take that, do a little quick math, multiply it by 100, and that gives us our degrees Celsius. And then, of course, to define degrees in Fahrenheit, we take Celsius, multiply it by 9 fifths, and add 32. Once that's done again, we clear the LCD, we set our cursor at the top of the first row, we print degrees Celsius and the degrees. Now, you'll notice here our string is in double quotes, and our integer isn't. Same thing here, we set 0, 1, so 0 across, 1 down. Degrees in Fahrenheit is a string, so that is in quotes. Degrees F, which is an integer, or a float in this case, is not. And then we delay 1,000 milliseconds, or one second. So it will update the temperature every second. Let's upload this and see what we get. Once your code is up and running, you should see on the top line your degrees displayed in Celsius, and on the bottom your degrees displayed in Fahrenheit. And of course, you can add a heatalyzer to it and watch the temperature change. There it goes. So if you want to challenge yourself, there are a few things you could do. You could change the measurement to degrees Kelvin. You could add an RGB LED and output green, yellow, or red lights, depending on the temperature in the room. You could even change your display to a bar graph, depending on how deep you want to get into this. Well, let's move on to our next experiment, where we'll add a button for a little more interactivity and write a game. In this third and final circuit in Project 4, we'll be building a DIY Who Am I game based on the Headbands game or the Heads Up app. Basically, you'll hold the LCD up in front of your forehead. A word will pop up along with a timer. Your friends will give you clues and you have to try to guess the word. If you do, before the timer runs out, you'll push the button, a new word will be displayed, and the timer will reset to zero. And if you get through all 25 words, it plays the victory song and says, you win! Otherwise, it says game over and plays the defeat song. So for this circuit, we'll be getting rid of the temperature sensor. We will be adding our buzzer, a push button. We'll only need to add one jumper wire to our current circuit, bringing our total up to 20. We're also going to add our battery holder, giving us true mobility. And you'll need some of your dual lock tape to affix it to the back of the baseboard. Now, a word of warning before you build the circuit, you will need to power down. Always power down your circuit between assembly and disassembly, otherwise you risk damaging your components. You'll also need some batteries. For those, you're on your own. So let's start. Once your circuit is complete, you can power back up. You may get some crazy readings on your LCD. Let's see, looks like it's 400 degrees Celsius here in this room currently without the temperature sensor. Don't worry about that. Once that's powered up, we can upload our code and take a look at that. You'll find your example in the usual place, SIK Guide Code Master. And for this, Circuit 4C DIY Who Am I? Now there's a lot going on in this code, so let's take a quick look at some of it. Again, we're including liquid crystal H, and we're defining the pins and giving it a name, LCD. We've got our button pin defined as pin two, our buzzer pin as pin six, and our button press time as zero. This is gonna give us our time between button presses. You can see our time limit at 15,000 milliseconds. That gives us 15 seconds. Our start time will be zero. We're using round number here at zero and an array size of 25, and that will match the number of words here in our array. We're setting our initial sequence to all zeros. In our setup, we're setting up our button pin to input, our LCD screen like we have previously. We're using a couple of functions here, generate random order and show start sequence. In our loop, we're going through our array. We'll be rounding our numbers, we'll be printing our names. And then if you finish all 25, we've got winner here and there's a winner function. So some of our functions down here, we show the start sequence, we clear our LCD, 
We give a category. In our case, our category will be animals because that's what we've programmed in. It'll print get ready. We'll count down three seconds and then it will start. Here, we're generating a random order. This will give a random order to the names or the words in our array. We'll print one. If you guess it correctly, you push the button and we'll go to the next one. Here we've got our game over function. This is what happens if you don't guess all 25. It will print your score. The buzzer will play the losing foghorn sound. And that will be it. And then it will just wait there. Now here's our winner function. If you win here, it will clear and set print you win. And then it will give the one up noise. And again, then it will go to this while true statement, which will just hold it here. So let's make sure that we are in proper board and proper port. And let's upload our code and see what happens. So once your code uploads, here's what you should see. You should get a category and it should say animals and it will say get ready and it'll give you a three second countdown. And there it will give you the name of an animal and you'll see your countdown timer in the lower left hand side of the screen. Now your friends will yell hints out at you. It charges you. They run them in Spain. Bull. Yes. Push the button. It gives you another, another animal and it resets the countdown timer to 15 seconds. It will count down while you try to guess something that we have 35 of here at SparkFun. Oh, dog. Yes. Hit the button. And this will keep going. If you get through all 25 words in the array, you've won and it will play the winning sound. But if you don't and the countdown timer gets all the way down. Uh oh, three, two, one. It plays the losing sound and the game is over. Now, currently the game is not programmed to reset with this button, but you can reset it by hitting the reset button on your redboard. So once you've tested it and make sure it works with your USB cable, you can unplug that, plug in your battery pack, and everything should work just as it was before. So if you want to challenge yourself a little with the code in this circuit, you could change the time limit, pull it from 15 seconds down to 10 or 5. How smart are your friends? Another thing you could do is just change the array. Use different words, different category, whatever you want. Or you could change the winning and losing songs because we've done that before. Those are some of the options. Now, I talked earlier about using different characters and I want to show you another, show you another game that's possible to be done on this. This is bonus footage, by the way. It's not in any guide. Each of our character spaces on our LCD is made up of smaller pixels, so you can create your own characters, which is what's been done for this game. We've created a small running person. Pushing the button starts the game, and the small person will run, using a series of different characters to create the illusion of animation. A number of obstacles will come towards him. Pushing the button again makes him jump. The timer in the upper corner keeps track of how many seconds you've been playing the game. If you jump too soon, or if you hit a wall, whoops, I guess I pressed it twice. There we go. It gives you your total time, and it says press the button to start again. I'll make sure there's a link to this code somewhere so that you can upload it and play it yourself. Congratulations, you've completed the three circuits in Project 4. When we come back for Project 5, we'll be building our first robot, learning how to control it, and learning how to have it control itself. Happy hacking, friends!